Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. To get started, let's head over to Copilot Studio in our browser. And so here from the homepage, we see that there's a couple ways to get started. We can go up here and use words, which would take us down the same path we're about to go, or we could go over here to the left and click on create. From this screen, we've got a couple options. We need to start with a new agent, which is what we're about to do, or we could go down here and there's a bunch of different pre-configured agents, other ones coming soon. And the idea is that these are kind of like starting points, maybe starting points in the functionality or just starting points if you're like, hey, what type of agent should I build? Maybe go look at some of these and see if you get inspired to what agent would help your business. But what we're going to do is because we already have a scenario, we're going to start with clicking new agent up here in the top. Now, the cool thing here is they actually use an agent to help us build the agent, right? How meta. So if we go in here and we click in, we're going to type out our message, something like, please help me create an IT support FAQ agent. This conversational agent will use knowledge to assist users with their IT support request. When it isn't able to solve their issue, it will create a support ticket for them. It will also do specific tasks such as help them get admin access to their PC and even order a new PC via topics. What we're doing here is we're giving the agent its idea, its purpose, right? Like it's the description. Agents need to know what they are supposed to be able to do in order to respond and then help us shape the instructions as we're about to see in a moment. Also, you know, if we look forward in the future, I'm guessing at some point we're gonna have agents calling other agents. So having a good description of what this agent's about really helps us kind of be ready for the future as well. So anyway, we're gonna hit enter here. And after a second, you can see it starts filling in things. So two things are happening. One is the conversation continues here. Over on the right, we can also see that it starts kind of taking notes. And so we're gonna see that those get pulled over as descriptions and instructions a little bit later. We can't edit them right now, but we can definitely edit them once we get into the actual interface. And as I've been building lots of agents lately, learning how to do all this, you know, I keep building them, I keep trying different prompts and seeing what it puts over there. It just kind of gives me ideas and thoughts about what does the agent think its instructions should be, whether I change them or not later, it's just helping my knowledge grow on like what it considers a good idea. Okay, so back over here on the left, now we can see that it's like, hey, we should name this thing. So how about IT support assistant? And so we could say yes, or in this case, I don't wanna say yes because I think I already have three agents named that. So I'm gonna give it something slightly different like demo IT support assistant. Once again, you can name yours whatever you want. You can throw your company name in there. You can change it, you can call it Alfred. I, I don't care what you do, but this is just going to be the name. And of course we can change it later. Everything we're doing here can be modified later. It's just kind of helping us get a good foundation to start. So now it's like, all right, now I wanna set up the instructions. I need to know more about what this agent does. But because my first prompt was so detailed, it has a bunch. I was like, hey, for example, and it's kind of regurgitating what I did earlier. So what I'm gonna do is just ask it to use those same ones. So I don't have to type it all again. So something like all those things you just listed are perfect. Let's add those as instructions. And one thing also to consider is every time you use this interface, because it is a large language model, you're gonna have a different conversation. Last time when I did that same step, it asked me what were the goals of the agent? Like, it, depending on the scenario, what information you provide in that initial prompt, you know, it's a true multi-turn conversation to build this agent. So you're going to see different things along the way, which is perfect and, and natural, right? If you ask the human the same thing twice, you're gonna get different responses as well. But it's all for the same goal of getting our instructions and our description to a good place so our agent is effective. So now it's like, hey, how about the guidelines? So like, this is basically saying, what do you want the agent to do? What is its personality? And so, for example, in the demo agent I showed you guys earlier, I added all this stuff about using dog humor and referencing Buddy, you know, just to try to kind of keep it light and breezy. And so that's probably not what you want in yours. That's okay. But you can say, hey, I want a real stickler professional. I'm looking for casual. I want jokes. I want this thing to be straight laced, right? You have all the controls here of what is the personality. So in my case here, we're going to do something like I want the agent to be casual. The user will often be frustrated, right? When you're using an IT support agent, you're probably, something's broken, so you're not in the best of mood. So let's try to take a less serious tone and help them lighten their mood. Once again, you do you, whatever works for you, but that is kind of what I like. I like fun ones, especially when I'm building these test agents. Like I, I wanna have a conversation with something I wanna talk to, right? Now I wanna ask, do you have any publicly accessible data sources you wanna use, so any websites? 
Now we're going to use knowledge, but we want to use our SharePoint site as some knowledge. We're going to do that in a few minutes. So you don't do any of those type of authenticated knowledge sources here. This would just be if you had a public website you're going to point at. I don't, so I'm just going to tell it so. I do not. We'll hit enter. Okay, so at this point, it's like, hey, I'm all set up. I've gotten all the information from you I need. If you want to continue to refine, so if you want to change the name or change the instructions or add more personality, it's like you could continue the conversation. But for the most part, you've given it all the bases it needs. Now, before we just jump up here and click create, which I'm going to do, what we want to do here is notice you could have skipped this whole set of conversation. If you wanted to start with a blank agent and fill in all the blanks yourself, we could have said skip to configure. So we're not going to do that. Obviously, we just did all the work. I don't want to lose it. Also over here, we've got a few other options. So you could start over the process. You could cancel. So if you just wanted to like get out of here, you don't want to make an agent or get into advanced settings, like what solutions and stuff like that. So all things that we'll leave for another day, because all we really want to do right now is create this thing. So let's click the pretty blue button. And here in just a few seconds, we're going to have our agent created for us. Okay, so now it looks like it's done, but it's not. So one of the keys here, see how the edit button is still grayed out? So what this is telling me is that, yeah, you know, the agent is kind of here, but it's still doing some stuff in the background and we're not ready to move forward. So basically just calm down for a second, take a sip of your coffee. Like we don't want to do anything until that edit button comes live. Okay, so now it's live. And I edited out, I don't know, somewhere between 10 to 20 seconds of, you know, waiting on that. You know, I've seen them take as fast as, like I said, about 10 seconds up to, you know, 30, 45 seconds isn't normal, but it, it does happen. You know, if you're sitting here and in 10 minutes from now, you know, it still hasn't lit up, something something failed. But assuming it only takes, you know, less than a minute, you're, you're in good shape. So just hold tight. Okay, so now that it's done, let's go ahead and hit edit. Up here at the top, right, we could change the name. If you didn't like the name you came up with, great. You can change the icon. Now note here, it has to be a PNG and it has to be less than 30K in size. I like it. it took me several tries for that to dawn on me. That's why I wanted to point out to you, but we just change the icon real quick. It's about as simple as you can imagine. So right here, I have a little icon I made. Boom, just like that. And we say save. You're tempted to use your company's logo there, but if you end up with a dozen agents, and they all have the same logo. Like that doesn't make sense. Making all your logos kind of follow a consistent pattern, shape, color scheme, things like that, that would be awesome. Whatever, it doesn't matter for us right now. Okay, so there's our description. This helps it shape what it can and can't do, what it can respond to. So make sure your description has a reasonable semblance to what you want to happen. So the main, the most important part we care about though right now is the instructions. So this is what it tells it what it can and can't do. And so based on our prompts, we've got some core instructions in here, right? Assist the users, create support tickets, order new PCs, interact in a casual tone, right? In reality, we're probably going to keep this interactive with casual tone and we're either going to delete or change all of these over the course of building out our agent because we want to make these more specific. For example, it says create support tickets when necessary, but it doesn't tell it how. So we want to say create support tickets when necessary using our create support ticket action item and things like that. So we're going to refine these. The instructions is where you're going to spend a lot of time. And those of you that have been practicing your prompting skills using Copilot or other large language models, those same skills where you've gotten used to talking to the large language models, you're going to use those to talk to your agent to help shape its behavior. All right, we don't have to change any of those right now. So let's just cancel out. Now, one more thing before we call this video done. And so the other thing I want to do is go over here for a moment and under here, we have orchestration. So use generative AI to determine how to best respond to your users and events. It is in preview, but we're typically going to turn this on because this is what's going to allow our agent to use those instructions and to use the knowledge and actions and triggers that we're potentially going to set up along the way to figure out what it does, right? So orchestration. So instead of us saying, hey, always use this action in this scenario, we're going to say, hey, you have an action called this and then it's going to figure out when to use that action on its own. So in most cases, especially all the demos that I'm doing, I'm always turning that on because that's what we want. We want the large language model thinking and helping through that process. And so thinking through how that works, if we go up here in the top right, let's click on settings for a second. And then now we go over here and click on generative AI. And so what happened is when we chose that orchestration that flipped this switch automatically for us. So if you want to go learn more, definitely click on these links. But then you're also going to see things like how strict should the content moderation be? And so this is setting what's called the temperature. This is controlling, you know, when you have high, more precise, then every interaction in your 
agent's going to feel more consistent. Someone asks the same question, they're going to get very close, if not the same exact answer, because everything is very precise. It's not going to inject its personality or flair into a lot of what's going on. Whereas if we switch down here to low, more creative, you see we get the warning, selecting this option might lead to increased inaccuracy and irrelevancy in your co-pilot. So this is saying, hey, let my co-pilot think on its own more. Let it add a little flair and kind of work outside the box a little bit more. So you're going to get more responses, more creative responses. But do you want that? Like in the case that we're going through where we're building this IT support agent, we probably don't. We want really precise answers. So we're going to stay up here and high. But this is one of those places for you to determine how your bot behaves yourself. We also have image input here. So this is if you want to allow the user when they are chatting with your agent to upload an image and then have that image be processed by the large language model. So respond like, what does it see? Things like that. We're not going to take advantage of that today, but that's another little feature I thought we would mention as we passed. And then down there, the enhanced search results. We're going to talk about that in the next module when we talk about knowledge. So for now, this all looks good, kind of the way it was when we got here, but just the same. So there we go. Right now, we have got a bot who's got a name. It's got a description. It's got some instructions. We've committed to using the generative AI for the orchestration, and we've talked a little bit about setting that temperature. In the next module, we're going to move down the screen here a little bit, and we're going to pull in knowledge. So we're going to talk about how we get that SharePoint information or Dataverse information or other line of business data in here so that it's not just answering questions based on its general knowledge, but we're going to get it to answer our very specific questions using our very specific resources. So hopefully I'll see you over there in a second.